When is it necessary to recode a variable? Generally, when the values of a categorical variable are not defined in a convenient way for the analyst. Let's take an example. Let's suppose that we have a nominal variable called favorite beer with four categories Bergen beer, Golden Brow, Tuborg, and Amstel. Our study requires some statistical comparisons between people who prefer German beers and people who prefer non German beers. The current variable levels are not very useful because those who prefer German beers can be found in two distinct categories, Bergen beer and Golden Brow, and those who prefer non German beers are divided in other two categories, Tuborg and Amstel, a Danish and a Dutch beer. That's why we have to recode this variable and create a new one with only two categories. One for the people who prefer Bergen beer and Golden Brau, German beers, and two for the people who prefer Tuborg and Amstel, non-German beers. So here's the original variable called beer. Uh, to see how it's coded, we have to double-click here on the name and here in the values column, values property. So the levels are, of course, Bergen beer, Golden Brau, Tuborg and Amstel, coded with 1, 2, 3 and 4 respectively. OK, let's go back. Now we are going to convert this variable into a new one with two levels only. Please keep in mind, one, people who drink German beers and two, people who drink uh, non-German beers. To do that, we go here in the Transform menu, the option Recode into different variables, because we don't want to destroy the old variable. We want to create a new one. Click here, now enter the variable beer in this window here, and write a new name here, here the name of the new variable. Let's call it beer2 and then press change to confirm. So the variable beer will be converted into the variable beer2. Now we can click this button old and new values to define the conversion rules. So uh, this uh, dialog box has two sections. The uh, left section old value here we will enter the all the values of the old variable and here in the section new value we will enter the values of the new variable so the old variable one corresponding to bergen beer is to be converted into value one why because it's a german beer so we press add here to confirm so value one will be converted into one in the new variable the second value, 2, corresponding to Golden Brow, will be converted into 1 again. Why? Because Golden Brow is a German beer 2, and German beers will be coded with 1 in the new variable. Press Add again to confirm. Don't forget to press Add. The old value 3 will be converted in the value 2. Why? because 3 corresponds to Tuborg, and Tuborg is a non-German beer. Press Add again. And finally, the value 4, the old value 4, will be converted into 2 again. Why? Because it corresponds to Amstel, and Amstel is not a German beer. Press Add again. That's all. These are the conversion rules. Now we can press continue and everything is set. So we can press OK to get our new variable. OK. That's the variable beer2. It only has two levels, of course, one corresponding to the German beer beers and two corresponding to the non-German beers.
Recording can also be used to transform a continuous variable into a categorical one. Let's build an example using the employee data file here. Uh, this is a database containing information about 474 employees of an American bank in the 90s. You can notice the variable salary here is the annual salary. Let's suppose we want to divide the employees into two groups, those who earn up to $50,000 a year and those who earn more than $50,000 a year. So, the variable salary will be converted into a categorical one. Uh, let's code with one the people who earn up to $50,000 and with two the people, the employees, who earn more than $50,000 dollars a year. So let's look at a fast way to do this conversion. Again, transform, recode into different variables. We enter the variable current salary here and we give a name to the new variable, salary2, for example. Press change to confirm and click old and new values. The first option we select here in the left side, old value, is this one. So we will include here the employees who earn up to $50,000 a year. So range lowest through value. Well, so the people who earn from the lowest salary to the highest value $50,000. And the new value is 1 because that's the code for this category. We press add. So the lower salary through uh, 50,000 will be coded with 1. And then, very simple, we select here all other values. So all the other values of salary. Uh, the salary is greater than 50,000 a year will be coded with 2, as we said before. So else is 2. The salary is greater than $50,000. Everything is set now. We can press continue and then OK. Take a look at this new variable, salary 2. It has two levels, of course. One for those who earn less than $50,000 and two for those who earn more than $50,000. You can check that yourself. A special case of recording is the reverse coding. Let's suppose that we have a battery of questions that use the Likert scale. Most of them codified this way, as you see in the first table. Totally disagree with one, disagree with two, and up to five totally agree. But one or several questions in the battery are coded contrary-wise, meaning totally disagree is not one is five, disagree is not two is four, and totally agree is not five, like here, is one. If we want to run, for example, a rel reliability analysis on this set of questions, it's absolutely necessary that all the questions are coded in the same way. So, we must apply reverse coding, we must recode the variables coded like this in the second table to be coded the same as the variables coded like this in the first table. So, the rules for reverse coding will be 5 is converted into 1, 4 is converted into 2, 3 remains 3, 2 is converted into 4, and 1 is converted into 5. Since the reverse coding procedure is similar with the usual recording method explained in this video, I will not present it in detail. I will let you execute this procedure as an exercise. 